So I, I have a question for you this morning, brothers and sisters. I want you to ask yourself, why does our church exist? What is our purpose and, and why do we do what we do? Now, this seems like a simple question, but I'm going to invite you to go a bit deeper. Are we really in the business of offering worship services in our building? Now, for some people, the answer to that question is likely yes. For some churches, that's it. But if the pandemic has taught us anything, and I do like to think that it has indeed taught us things, it's that church isn't really the building at all. We, every one of us, we are the church. So let me go back to the beginning then. What is the purpose of the church? Or I guess if, if I wanted to put it another way, I'd ask, what business are we in? It's an interesting question. James Emery White wrote, uh, wrote a book called Rethinking the Church. And in that book, he tells the story of the most dominant business in the 19th century, the railroad. Now, if you think back, you, you'll recognize that trains were the most efficient and effective way to move people and goods all around the country. And the railroads, well, they were huge businesses, right? Wherever the railroad went, that's where progress was. But as time went on, you get into the beginning of the 20th century and this new technology emerges, automobiles. And the, rail, the railroads, well, they didn't know how to react. They, they were well positioned to take advantage of this new technology, but they made a critical miscalculation. You see, what happened was the railroads thought that they were in the railroad business. And from that perspective, they saw no, no use for cars because they didn't run on tracks and they didn't have steam locomotives. But what they missed out on was that they were not really in the railroad business. They were, in fact, in the transportation business. And cars could become a critical part of transportation. Imagine the possibilities if the railroads had worked with the car companies to turn it into a seamless transportation system. But that's not what they did. Rather than embrace this new technology, they viewed it as a competitor. And well, I guess we all know what happened to the railroads, right? They're still around, but they're not what they once were. So what does that mean for us? I guess the question comes back to, what business are we in? Are we in the gather on Sunday morning for a nice worship service in a building business? For some churches, again, that answer is yes. There are plenty of churches who meet only once a week, whose entire focus is on the worship service, who structure their common life around the preferences of their members. They do the prayers that people like, they do the music that people like, they, they hire the priests that people like. It's, it's all about their preference. And while that may appeal to some, a guy named Tom Rayner once wrote that when a church is driven by member preference, it's headed for decline and then death. The decline may be protracted and the death may be delayed, but it is indeed inevitable. A church cannot survive long-term where members are focused on their own preferences. Now at Epiphany, if we've learned anything from the pandemic, it's that we are in the business of sharing the gospel, of being disciples who make other disciples, of seeking God, living Christ, and sharing the spirit. This has always been our mantra, but being prevented from worshiping here on our campus has driven that home with extreme clarity. Seemingly overnight, we have had to morph into broadcasting on Facebook and YouTube and our website and Zoom and email, and we're communicating in ways we never thought possible. 
We provide 12 online opportunities each week for, for worship, for prayer, for fellowship, education, interaction. Our pastoral care team reaches out to all the folks regularly, and so do a whole lot of other ministry groups. Our outreach, our outreach, even though we're not gathering, has benefited food banks, homeless shelters, scout projects, and indeed international refugees across the world. Our little parish in Las Vegas has learned to innovate on the fly, and we're reaching more people online than at any time in our history. And we're not done. That's the best part. We're not even close to being done for being a follower of Jesus will continue to force us outside of our comfort zone and challenge us to share the good news in ways that we have not yet even thought of, my friends. And so we're not in the worship in a building business. We're in the Jesus business. And that, oh, that's a wild ride indeed. Ponder that, my friends. God bless you. God love you. Be well.